Yeah, so that's fun. You want it from the start or like just what we do in general? All right, go ahead. Go from, from the start. From the start. It actually started in、um, this classroom. I came late to class once, and was, the class was about software entrepreneurship. And、um, so my professor told me, All right, Juliano, you got to pitch a company, like your company. I didn't have anything at the time, but like I was, I was an artist, and I always wanted to do something in the art world. And so I said, I want to change the way people have access to art and interact with art. That's essentially what I said in 30 seconds with a lot of like jittery. I was stressing, obviously. Of <laughs> and, course.、Um, yeah, and I, for some reason, people liked the idea, even though there was no idea behind it. It was just a, a mission statement. <laughs> And、yeah. I got four people to help me work on it, and then since then we've raised money and we've done a lot of things. And what year、yeah. was that? You know,、uh, tw- the, when I pitched to the class was 2022. Yeah. Yeah, because the pandemic changed a lot of the things people were feeling about、uh, elitism and class structures. So of course,、Absolutely. accessibility to the art world would have been so on. So of、mm-hmm. the moment in terms of people's consciousness, I'm,、right. I'm sure a lot of people going, yeah, I want that too. Where, where in the Middle East? So yeah, I've lived like half my life in Dubai and Qatar. So it's basically split between both. Well, I can tell you, it's very vibrant scene at the moment. It just seems a bit,、um, it like it's like it needs some guidance, maybe. No, that's exactly how I put it. Actually, I think.、Um, They're very,、uh, what's the word? Safe. I'll call it safe, and it kind of makes sense. Like they, because it's,、uh, you know, there's some things, some people you don't want to offend and stuff like that, and you want to make sure your image is like, you don't take many risks, and so yeah, yeah, it, it's like a give or take kind of、um, <laughs> exchange. So yeah, yeah. I had a client come earlier in the year.、Um, he he came to do something ambassador like, and one of the hotels called me, and we had to make sure on the art tour there was no nudity at all. No, yeah, I mean, I don't mean it more so in that way because that's a more so like a cultural thing. It's not very much like censorship, and I wouldn't see it as censorship. I would see it as respecting the values and the the beliefs of the country. But I agree. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So go ahead. It's your turn now. Thank you very much for taking me up with you. No, yeah, no worries. Um, I think one thing I always wanted to like ask you first is, I love how you made the glasses your iconic thing. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. It would believe me when my eyesight started failing. I thought, how am I going to do this? And then it just I have four pairs of these, and sometimes、oh, really? I change the colors.、Uh, So I'm glad that you like them. And it was actually there was an art critic called Walter Hops. He was、mm-hmm. around during Warhol's day,、uh, and he wore two pairs of glasses at once. Interesting. Which really stuck with me because, of course, what he was symbolically saying was he had a a better eye than everyone else because he'd had two on、uh, one. Ah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's very interesting, actually. Awesome. I mean, I've interviewed a lot of artists and.、Um, People that are curators and artists and stuff like that. I think you're the first art critic, and so I wonder what do what do artists、um, mean to you? So I studied to be an artist. I studied.、Uh, I first out of high school went to a special art school, which was a rare and wonderful thing at the time because、mm-hmm. if you got it, it was free. Something similar to the Royal Academy School here. It was called the Central Technical School in Toronto, and it had sculpture foundries and and you know, pottery wheels and life drawing classes, and you know, some of Toronto's best artists would be teaching there. And it was sort of a really good place for me to to to. The funny thing about when you study art is you sometimes learn a lot about yourself as well as the craft that you're mastering. Absolutely. The other. The other reason it was good for me was because they did teach craft, and I found that when you went to university、uh, art programs, they weren't teaching craft at all. So you'd have all these ideas about art, but you'd have no facilities to make 
art. So what art means to me is the way that, um, you know, usually great art changes the way you think and feel. And you can see a different perspective. And and uh, the artists who stick with me the most are the ones that uh, shift my thoughts about the world. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Yeah. Um, and that can be think... any yeah, medium. I mean, Marina. Oh, yeah, Abramovich. of course. Yeah. Yeah. Marina Abramovich was here for a press view uh, on Monday morning and uh, she's three years away from 80. She'd had an illness. She was told she couldn't fly, but this is the first solo show she's having in, in the Royal Academy, the first of a woman ever oh, wow. in the big game. She got on the Queen Mary and took a boat for seven days to get here. Oh so my God. In, it just everything, then not to mention her performances, they, they kind of push the boundaries of what the body is capable of so so i think they inspire you artists Sorry. inspire you in, in so many ways and i you totally agree that people. Yeah. Connect people sorry to interrupt yeah no worries art is like very unique though because like in a sense it's um doesn't necessarily need to be highly technically challenging to be aesthetically valuable and so correct yeah in terms of like describing what really yeah, you're what thinking is... something like a ready-made. So something simple doesn't mean it's easy. And if you think of Duchamp's Armat urinal. Absolutely, urinal, yeah, yeah. And that was an incredible historical piece, but it wasn't mm. technically difficult. It was very simple. Right. He was right and knew how to... It was the right time and the right place to make that statement. Absolutely. And so I wonder, what, what do you think is great art? Is it just the reaction it gets by as many people as possible? Like, how would you define that? So that's interesting because right now, Banksy would probably be the most famous artist that people mm -hmm. know. Everybody knows Girl with Balloon. Yeah. He certainly uh, creates a conversation, firstly, because he's anonymous. Mm -hmm. Secondly, because there's a type of activism to his work and he takes on big issues. Uh, the art itself may not be that great but his mm -hmm. whole his whole i mean technically great or technically proficient it's it's no yeah i know what you mean but he has captured the imagination of a, of everyone in the last 20 years uh and that's different than someone like let's say artemisia gentileschi who can paint beautifully mm -hmm. um and didn't get recognized for years so so there's no one way of of judging it can, can you ask me the question again i think i got lost and you said how do you judge what, what great is art? yeah like in your in your point of view what do you how do you find great art i well you you look every day you make yourself mm -hmm. look and if if you don't have access to galleries and artist studios then you look online it's mm -hmm. a it's a it's an act of like people go to the gym to work out their muscles you have to right. work out your eye so your eye learns how to see things and you're always training your eye because you want to, you want to have a well trained eye, right? And you so know one thing that's funny. Yeah, go sorry. On. Go ahead. No, you please, Juliana, go. Yeah. Um, I interviewed um Somi Nwanda, who's like a digital artist and curator, and something she mentioned which was really interesting is that you find a lot in the art world that some people's subject subjectivity matters more, and so um, I don't know how how do you feel that case in towards yourself and towards the art world in general. I'm not sure I understand the question. Did you say subjectively? Because like, about you, you can say that art, in essence, is a subjective, um, subjectively valuable, depending on who's looking at it, right? And so, um, but she mentioned that some people's subjectivity matters more, and then it derives what some artworks are more valuable than others. And so I wonder, because you're an art critic, essentially, you well, do wait, have this... Well, the yeah. art art's business too. So right. I mean, the whole subjectivity thing loses loses. Um, you know, it's a business. Things go for mm -hmm. a lot of money where they don't. So it depends on how you're judging it. If you want to judge it subjectively and say, you know, I prefer my 
niece's painting to anything I see in the gallery. That's just a conversation. But the art world is a business and there are artists who are at the top of their game in the same way there's business people at the top of their game. And that's because there's a system in place to put them there. That system is auction houses and right. curators, galleries and critics and collectors. Mm -hmm. And then there's, you know, biennales and so, so, so many awards. So I would challenge that it's subjective. I think what you collect is subjective, but the art world mm -hmm. itself does have a structure to it. Absolutely. If you're entering on that level. Right. Did I answer so, the question? No, yeah, that, that was definitely an answer, yeah. It's very, I've never heard anyone mention, um, answer that way, which is very interesting. And I totally agree with you, though. I wonder, um, do you see it as, as a good I thing? I hear people sometimes. Thing? Yeah, go ahead. You hear people sometimes. Do I, do I see what is a good thing or a bad thing? Like, do you see the system... Do you see anything wrong with the system? Uh, every system has something wrong with it. The education system has something wrong with it. Health mm -hmm. systems have something wrong with it. Political systems have something wrong with them. Yeah, I mean, every system has things that are wrong with it. I think what we're challenging right now, and that's why I mentioned Marina Abramovich earlier, is mm -hmm. when we went through a global pandemic and we had time to reflect on how museums and systems were uh, serving the cultures they represent, we realized that women, people of different ethnicities, um, there's a lot of people who weren't being represented. And I think that was one of, that is one of the things that doesn't work in the system that they're trying to correct. So it can be more inclusive. Right. And it, where does it where where does it start? Like who are you say? Who's that message directed to? So during the pandemic, the, the, the galleries and uh, auction houses and mm -hmm. art fairs checked at how they were representing people of mm -hmm. different ethnicities. Not what, I mean, the, the standard line was, it was all stale, male and pale, which was just middle class white men. Now right. they're trying to actually put them, um, Everybody's making an effort to change that. Mm. No, That's one thing. You know, the next thing yeah. is class. How come only rich people can be in the art world? Because you can't support yourself unless you can pay for it. And what do artists need? They need you know, eight hours of time to think for one hour of time to work. So there's, right. it'll be continually taking on the next step. And Tracy Emin opened up some sort of school in Margate, give artists studio time to work in. That, that kind of helps, takes a bit of financial pressure off it. That's why I mentioned the Central Technical School I went to because they were free schools at the time. Uh, and, and that's also, you could work in the summer and pay for your tuition. Just doesn't happen anymore. The tuitions are so expensive. You, know, yeah. you so can it's literally a lot buy a house every year almost. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it's so, so much money. I mean, Jerry Gagosian, Hildy Halpenstein was here earlier and she was saying she's going back to business school because when she, she has two art degrees, but no one ever taught her how to make money. And she realized mm -hmm. it's not sustainable, the career in the art, no matter how seductive and interesting and um, right. all encompassing it is, if you can't keep your finance, it keep generating finances. Absolutely. I actually love her page. <laughs> yeah, she's really, really nice in person. I can confirm that. I DM'd yeah. her and I, I, can I interview you? And she said, meet me at my hotel at 10 a.m. And she was just wonderful. We walked around and looked at her and I kept a microphone up and she's very, very personable and really yeah. bright. And she's going to just keep getting brighter. I she totally was here agree. for something called Build Your Own Art, Art World. So this thing saying, if, if people aren't letting you into it, build your own. You build, that's literally what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it good? Yeah. Good. Good. Good for you. Who, who's the most interesting person you've met? Or like that led she to an interesting, interesting story. That's really dumb. I've got to say this too. She was interesting. I do a podcast called A Private View and I interview artists. And I yeah. always that the last person I met was the most interesting person 
I've met. Right. It's like everyone I'm on that day, whoever I met, I'm like, oh, that was the best. So I, I'm not the, uh, this. She, she was very interesting because she's something different. She's mm-hmm. approaching things very differently, and she's very bold, and she's putting herself out there. Um, but by the same token, Bob and Roberta Smith is interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. Emma Stern was interesting. I interviewed her last week. Um, Jake Chapman was very interesting. Uh, yeah i mean a lot of interesting people when you're in the moment with them they're all so interesting it gets cute and then there's some young students who are who who are completely they just blow your mind as well and you you've only talked to them once so uh yeah i know i couldn't limit myself to a one most interesting person awesome yeah um one person that's definitely interesting is jerry salts i think and, uh... Yeah, and he's very supportive. He sent me some great messages about like keep up the good work. Uh, just he's very generous with his his uh, communications. He spreads the love. And he's Tomikoso very honest. With love. Yeah, you were saying yeah, that and plain language, plain language too. Mm-hmm. He doesn't make it hard for people to understand what he's saying. Right. And one thing that really struck me with with a quote he said that there's no room left for art criticism, and that you know everything's coming at you from different places. I wonder, I don't know if you, I think it was on the Bear Facts uh, podcast or something like that. I don't know how, how would you. Say, I heard him say he thought more people should be art critics, and he felt that people were afraid to say they didn't like things. That everyone was just saying everything's great. I heard something. That, quite yeah, different. I saw. I read that too. Yeah, I think that was in, yeah. for options. Nobody though. does criticism anymore because all they do is say everything's good. Right. Exactly. And so, yeah. How do you see art criticism, like today and to the future, like because everyone's like at the end of the day, it's a system. You want to make sure you climb that system. You don't offend the the wrong people. Um. Yeah. How does, how do you navigate art criticism in that way? You know, we do live in a time where people really don't like to hear anything too critical. Mm -hmm. Things have to be worded in in gentle ways, in 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 careful ways. I I think that. I think that there's ways of, so there's a lot of things that have changed about the way we communicate. Like there used to be a time when in the workplaces I was in, people could yell at you. That can't happen anymore. So the whole world has had to change the way they act. If someone's creative and they're putting something out there, I don't think they deserve to be publicly um You know, the critics used to say things like that person can't paint, they have no talent, um, mm-hmm. you know, they should just get a job doing something else. That's not, no, that's not how, no one wants to read that anymore. They don't want to read an art critic bullying someone. Right. Clement Greenberg apparently was famous for it, just saying really, and it was the style then, that's how people talked. No, that's true. I think um, a big part of uh, in the international culture is um, be tough on a person and they get better. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. So how, how do you deliver your criticism? What well, you have to, I mean, if it, if I was going to do that with someone, I would do that privately. And, mm-hmm. and it is possible that I don't write a column like Jerry does. So I don't have to expose people's weaknesses in in person. I just really do the podcast and writing on my own. And so I'll have to let you know, because I I, honestly, it's a tough one. I mean, you don't want to, I don't want to kill someone's spirit. Right. If someone's technically not proficient, 
you could say, oh yeah, this is good. You could keep, you know, maybe you should try this technique or that technique or mm -hmm. um, you, here's a really, here's a problematic situation. When people paint really, really well, very technically proficient, sometimes they get hooked on hyperrealism and they don't want to depart from the hyperrealism. It's like you can play a perfect piano concerto, but you never want to try Eric Satie or you know, something by Steve Wright or something different. I, I find it's the people who can paint perfectly, they get stuck the most and they get stuck in that repeating perfection when really they need to get a little bit messed up and out of their own mm -hmm. way and do some painting instead of just copying na nature that's a really good point because yeah it, you're like like you mentioned you're practicing your eye and then in one way you're practicing your imagination precisely i yeah. have real it's your imagination i'm interested in so i think that would be one example of how I would deliver the message. It's like, you, you know, we know you're perfect. We know you can do this perfectly. You can mm -hmm. make the plant look real. What's going on in your imagination? Like, get creative. Right. Absolutely. And I think... Uh... And, and maybe it's that time when I'd start to have a criticism towards someone. Mm -hmm. Because I find it's confusing for the public if they... If they look at a piece and go, oh, I like this painting because it actually looks like a glass. It's it's doing a disservice to the public because what what we need to know is, is what is it that we can't see that an artist can bring to life? Wow, that was very well said. What What is it nowadays what we need to be, what is like the movement or the the, the next thing that people should be paying attention to? I know digital art is growing a lot, but it has sort of like declined recently. So I wonder uh, in your perspective, what does it look like? Well, personally, I'm thinking the whole thing of trends, even in fashion, the mm -hmm. trends just aren't, people aren't following trends as much anymore. Oh yeah, it's craft, just been a lot of everything. Craft is, craft is getting very big and that's quite nice. And that's part of the, uh, the way we viewed women's arts in the past that's great um but i don't i don't think people believe in trends anymore and the same thing is true as fashion to a certain extent mm -hmm. everyone came out of the last few years a bit suspicious of things a bit I careful think, yeah i totally i think um although it, it caused a lot of um some sadness and some negative things to happen but I think COVID was meant to happen and it happened for a reason and ultimately it's gonna lead to a better future I think I think it was like a reset that we all needed yeah yes without the illness without the illness yeah. the, the problems to the economy having a reset was a great idea yeah and it really like it's like unprecedented almost like everyone was okay with life and everything and like routine was great and then all of a sudden you don't know for how long you're gonna be stuck and yeah. everyone started having long hair and <laughs> yeah and artists became into surrealism because they didn't have any external things to to paint right. i think of julie curtis i mean she produced these amazing surreal type of food pictures mixed with hair and imagined scenes in a kind of de Chirico setting through the pandemic because there was nothing else to do except imagine. I wonder, um, for someone just starting out, um, do you have any advice so they can look at art better? Go see something every day. Make it a make it part of your daily routine to see something every day. You know, read, listen, look as much as you can to as much as you can. If you're a practicing artist, uh, the discipline of just showing up, even if you think you have nothing to do that day because you don't feel creative, just practice the discipline of showing up to your studio or if you work on the computer, your computer, even if you just sit there going, I'm blocked, I'm stuck do it because you're not it, it'll pass 
Oh, yeah, even if like uh, I think there was this one quote that someone said, um, even if you fail and you do something every day, nothing ever. Not even like you don't even need to fail, but like nothing happens. You're incrementally getting better. And well, the the thing that I'd say is the failures. Like first of all, if you don't fail every so often, you're not pushing yourself hard enough. Right. And these failures you make teach you so much. Mm -hmm. And again, to quote Marina Abramovich, she said the couple of failures she had, she learned so much from. Mm -hmm. Could you give an example? No, because she I didn't ask her. It was in an auditorium. Uh, I didn't say, oh, what performances of yours were the ones that failed? Um, no, yeah, I definitely think it's... Oh, give me an example aside from that. Okay, let's say mm. a painter's painting. Should we deal with painting or something yeah, else? Yeah, go. Whatever you like. Let's say a painter's painting and and uh, they're trying to go in a new direction. Let's say they're mid-career artists, everyone's mm -hmm. buying, has bought their work, but they don't want to just churn out a new body of work. Mm -hmm. Let's say they depart from what they're known for, they try something new, and you know the market's a bit soft on it, it doesn't like it. It probably taught that artist a lot. Absolutely. That's so true, yeah. I think David Hockney had like a similar situation to that. Probably. He to, yeah, he tried to go into photography, I think. And it just didn't really caught on as much as his, uh, I don't know what you, even you call his kind of art. Well, I would stick with a colorist with him because mm. again, the me the way he makes art, he's curious about everything. So mm. he would try a, a, an iPad to a sculpture, right. to a theater set, to a painting, to... So I'd stick with color when it comes to Hockney. How, how do you, uh, yeah, like a quick side note. How do you uh, convince people to your, to your vision of the, the art world? I don't. You don't? I try to listen to them. I try mm -hmm. to listen to them because there's, it's everybody's own. I mean, the people who I work with know and listen to me because that's what I'm paid for. But I, and I don't tell them unless they ask. They might have another reason for doing something. Mm. So it's never, it's never, I'm never attached to people agreeing with me. Right. I think that's a really, that's really good advice too for anyone just trying to get into art criticism that build your own voice. Yeah. Yeah. I always ask this at, at, um, because we're almost near the end. Is there anything you wish I had asked you or we wish we talked about? Um, let me think. Probably I'd want to hear more about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what do you want to know? Uh, what, what, what do you want to do in 10 years? What, where will your wow. career be? Um, your business model, how is that going to support your art making process will you stay in the states or will you go back to the middle east or will you live between both i can't say 10 years from now but i can definitely say a year from now we're launch like we definitely have this virtual platform that we're building on and we're gonna we're trying to bridge the gap between tech business and art and so we're Great. launching an art fair in qatar in Terrific. 2024 so glad i asked that's but amazing. it's not it's not an art fair like the art fair that's traditionally or like you're used to hearing from. It's very much um a biennale kind of experience, but where you can buy art off the wall. That's and, great. Um, Does because, it have a name? Uh, the art fair. I don't. Yeah, we've <laughs> we've had some names, but we have had other issues with names. Like people already, it's crazy how many people have trademarked things. So it's like very hard <laughs> to come up with a name these days. But yeah, nothing let you know. But um, what we're thinking of, because Qatar is very, uh, we're trying to develop the commercial art space in the region to be much more accessible and transparent and easier for people to get into it. And so we're involving all, every creative sector possible. And so I'm sure you Qatar, you've known, like, you know, Qatar's big in sports and yeah. we have fashion, film, digital art, music, performance, like literally anything creative you can think of is incorporated. That's, Yeah. 
that's that's really good and really progressive and really needed no yeah I, th I got really bored of the catalog experience of an art fair and yeah i definitely need, i think curators should play a bigger role in them yeah <laughs> you you mean that there should be some sort of theme in the booths the booths should have some sort of theme so that the whole whole experience has a message instead of just pictures on walls being sold mm -hmm. yeah and even like um rethinking the booth like do you need a booth to, to sell your art or does it they're, they're we're exploring new ways of um experiencing and immersing yourself into art yeah i'm glad i'm glad i think you i think what we want to say but we're we're not saying it is that the uh art fair model is a little tired Mm -hmm. and it needs yeah, it to absolutely. change because it's starting to look like a moving shopping mall absolutely and i i regret almost calling it a fair like i don't even know what to call it <laughs> it's not really a festival it's not really a well a the biennale thing is kind of nice that biennale thing because it implies it's it's like an install an installation or something i don't know yeah and uh, do you have any advice on that Nope. Making but I'll it more, keep uh... talking to you about it. I just can do it. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. It'll be one of those things that you learn as you go. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I'm learning every day. It's like you meet so many interesting people, like you mentioned. And it's so crazy how everyone came from such a unique background and has such yeah. a, like a unique view on things. And so it's very cool. <laughs> it's why no one wants to leave the art world because you can have a billionaire in a room with an artist who may not have keys because they have no money and they stay on their uh, friend's couch. Yeah. Like maybe people who work jobs with other art dealers, with may maybe someone who's just walked in off the street. And it's just great the way everyone's drawn to the art world. Yeah, I don't know how to describe it. It has this almost sexual appeal to it. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It's seductive. Absolutely. Yeah, what what are you working on? What is what does your future look like? So I'm still building uh, my portfolio of interviews. I'm mm -hmm. working with Art in Mayfair to do some things with, the, believe it or not, with more fashion brands. I did some talks in Louis Vuitton for the Prince's Trust. So continuing to present and get access to better artists. Tomorrow morning, I'm going out to. Woolwich to Ray Richardson's studio and interviewing him. He kindly asked me to write the forward for his exhibition catalog, which will open in October, and just to kind of keep going forward with them. That's awesome. I think uh, one thing that I've been asked a lot is, yeah, it's amazing that everyone's doing all these things. How do you get to do these things? What is, what is the, the thing you do before that to get there? Do people just well, reach out to you? There isn't really one, there isn't, a, it's not a straight line. You just keep waiting for opportunities. So I, I work with a lot of hotels showing their guests around. And part of it was because I lived across the street from one of them. Mm -hmm. And they knew I worked in the art world. So you, you start showing up for things. like, And then, then I started getting all of their clients and taking them out on these behind the scenes of the Mayfair art world. Mm. So maybe they get access to a viewing at Sotheby's before it was open to the public or um, a director from House or Worth would come out and show them the show. Just really special things because yeah. you may be wealthy, you may have a degree, but people still feel intimidated walking into galleries sometimes. And if you have it arranged in advance, it makes it a really interesting experience because someone is helping you understand they're fast tracking your understanding of it right. of what the artist wanted so so I guess you know last night there was an event and I, I had a busy day everything's busy and I thought oh I don't want to go and I thought no force yourself go it was a uh, I was a member of a, a jury that chose emerging artists so I went and and it, it was kind of a little bit Things weren't running that perfectly. I, you know, stayed, talked to people. Um, of course, I ended up talking to the guy who runs Art Review. 
He's the publisher of it. And then this oh, morning cool. he emailed me. So you just keep showing up. Like who knows what would happen there. I think you just have to keep working at it. That's great advice. Yeah, just show up. Show you know, up. Yeah. Same with like, it's just like the artist. Uh, you, you know, even if you don't think you're inspired, go to your studio. So, mm -hmm. so on the nights where I'm like, oh, I just want to go home, but there's an opening at Sadie Cole's. I'll have to go. You mm -hmm. make yourself because something might happen. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I think FOMO is great. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it, and it, not with everything, you have to focus your FOMO. Exactly. Totally. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for uh, agreeing to this, Maeve. It was really fun. It was really fun. I'm, I'm pleased to have met you. Please stay in touch if you have any questions. Absolutely. I'd be happy to talk to you again. And best of luck with your with your adventures. I mean, you're gonna yeah. make you're gonna make your own art world. It sounds like. Absolutely. Yeah, I hope so. Everything goes good. And um, yeah, I'll definitely have links to your Instagram, your site, and everything. Um, Thank yeah. you. Thank you. For, um, it's been an yeah. honor. No, the honor is mine. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Bye-bye. See ya.